Um, now, once you finish processing a batch, then that batch enters the commit phase. Um, the idea is that you can have any number of bolts in the topology implement this commit method, and then the batch isn't considered committed until it was successfully processed, and then successfully committed by everyone who wanted to commit it. Okay? Now, the key thing that transactional topologies provide you is that the commits are guaranteed to be ordered, uh, strongly ordered. Um, so if there's ever a failure during a commit, it'll retry that commit, but it'll never move on to the next commit until that commit succeeds. So for example, let's say you go to commit batch one, right, and let's say it fails. So then you'll just retry batch one, and then let's say that succeeds, then you move on to uh, batch two. Let's say that succeeds, you go on to batch three, then you go on to batch four. If that fails, you retry it. Right? So it's, it's strongly ordered, and there might be repeats in the middle. So this strong ordering is all you need to do something like counting idempotent. Um, so here's like the code for doing idempotent counting. Um, so the idea is that you have this idempotent counting bolt, which implements that transactional bolt interface and also the committable interface. Um, so a new instance of this bolt is created for every batch. Um, you can see here it's parameterized with the transaction ID for the batch. Um, now, you know, you still process one tuple of time, and, and what this is going to do is actually maintain in memory the partial count um, for this, this batch, for this, this portion of the computation. Um, now, here's, 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 here's the trick. Um, rather than just blindly update the count in the database, um, what you do is um, you actually store in the database the count and the transaction ID. Um, the idea is that you only update the count there if your transaction ID is different than what's stored there. And this enables item point counting because of the strong order in the commits. So like for example, let's say you go to commit and um, half the tasks succeed and half the tasks fail. Um, well, it's going to retry the commit. What's going to happen is that the tasks that already succeeded will go and see, oh, the ID is already in the database. I won't do anything. The ones that fail will see that the transaction ID is what it was before, and it'll go ahead and finish the commit. Um, well, so let me just give a shout out to the uh, Apache Kafka guys. Uh, they came up with this trick of keeping the transaction ID in the database. It's a really cool trick, and it's uh, really quite powerful. And I think Storm takes this this idea to the logical extreme and really enables some really really cool stuff. So another cool thing about transactional topologies is that you can actually process multiple batches in parallel, but the commits will only be in order. So this is essentially pipeline execution of batches, um, which just makes it very efficient. The transactional topologies aren't quite available yet. They'll be available in the next version of Storm. Um, it's actually fully implemented. It just needs to be finished being tested. Um, one thing about transactional topologies, they require a more sophisticated queuing system than something like Kestrel or, or something like that to uh, beat the topologies. Uh, and we're actually going to target Kafka as the first implementation of transactional style. All right, so a few other tidbits of Storm. Uh, Storm has a Storm has a UI, uh, very similar to Hadoop's UI. Um, UI lets you see what topologies are running in the cluster, um, and then actually gives you very fine-grained metrics of the processing. So it tells you things like, you know, what's the average latency for a spout tuple to be completed for every bowl, what's the average latency? Uh, it lets you dig in on an individual stream and task basis. For those of you on EC2, um, there's a companion project called Storm Deploy, um, which is a one-click deploy tool. So you can have a Storm Deploy, you can have a you know, fully configured Storm cluster uh, in you know, 10 minutes. Um, it's really cool to deploy. All the code I've shown in this presentation is in the Storm Starter project. Storm Starter just contains a lot of example technologies to help you get started very quickly. Um, and finally, Storm has a lot of documentation. It has about 20,000 words of documentation. It's all on the Storm Wiki. Um, the feedback on it has been really good. It's helped you know, the community get up to speed very, very fast. All right, finally, um, Storm has a growing ecosystem of companion tools. Uh, there are Scala, JRuby, and Clojure DSLs. I wrote the Clojure DSL, and then random people wrote the Scala and JRuby DSLs. Um, there's lots of Spout implementations, Kestrel, AMQP, JMS, 
um, some other ones, and I'll have a Kafka one soon. Um, and then people have contributed you know, serializers, adapters for using more, you know, more languages with Storm, um, and then there's Cassandra and MongoDB uh, integration as well. Right, can I take any questions? Do you have plans to integrate with uh, HBase? The question is, do I have plans to integrate with HBase? Um, so you can, you know, so like when I reference the MongoDB and Cassandra integration, it's really just like a simple like hundred line bolt that manages that stuff. So um, it's very easy to use on any database. Can you example Sorry, one person at a time. Okay, let me start. Sorry, Raymond. Your example is a two seconds execution. For breach, yeah. Cool. So that sounds pretty low. So do you have any database I.O. as part of that uh, improving? Yeah, so it's doing, yeah, so the breach quality has to do like thousands of database calls. You have to like fetch the social graph, right? Uh, there's some future stuff on the horizon for Storm. Um, it's actually, there's a new abstraction that I'm working on called a state spout, which actually lets you synchronize an external source of state into a Swarm topology in memory, which will essentially enable you to do something like synchronize a social graph into Storm, and then eliminate all the database calls and get something like reach down to like a few hundred milliseconds. Any questions? So the question is, isn't it just a single point of failure? So the design of Storm is that um, all the demons in Storm are actually fail fast, and they don't keep any state in memory. They're actually designed to be able to die and restart at any point without actually affecting anything. So if your Nimbus demon like dies, it doesn't, it won't actually like shut down the topologies. It's like the new job tracker. If you kill that, you just lost everything, right? Uh, so Nimbus will just restart like nothing happened. Uh, it turns out this is like, you know, we eventually want to have like high availability, availability for Nimbus. Because when you lose Nimbus, you lose like the monitoring and restarting. But the key thing is that nothing catastrophic happens. So as long as you restart it, everything is fine. And in practice, that has been very, very nice. Are there any open source real time machine learning systems for these or something Yeah, so the question is are there any like uh, open source machine learning things built on Storm? I know there's there's one company doing a lot of machine learning stuff. I don't think they, they haven't open sourced anything. Uh, you know, it's only been around for a few months. Uh, certainly, that would be a really awesome project to do. Uh, so you mentioned the three second timeout. If a commit fails, it fails like commit one, commit one, and so forth. Yeah. So if commit one fails, is there any effort to get to the front of the queue and speed it up versus say commit four? Or the commits, I mean, so, so the commits are ordered. So well, yeah, it's so never actually input has to be played again, right? Yeah. So is that the time to speed that up, or is it input to the back of the queue that exists? Yeah, that, that'll be the first thing that's committed, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it, it, it'll admit it as soon as, as soon as, as it's detected and failed, it'll yeah. admit it. It seems like you have to have a memory at the bottom of the tree to buffer up all the commits until that point. Yeah, yeah. What you do is you actually put a limit on the number of batches that can be active at once. Oh, okay. So, Balance it. and then it ends up with stuff for you. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you.